very welcome back to Unstable TV. India has landed on the moon. But before we get into that, if this is your first time on the channel, do not forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, if you hit that bell. And if you're back with us again, thanks. So what are we checking out today, Danielle? So today, James, history was made. Well, history was made yesterday, but we're doing a video about it today. So India is officially the fourth country to ever land on the moon. And the first country to ever Ever go to the South Pole? Ever. Ever. The South Pole of the Bell Matter. Bell no. no, it's historic and we love learning about everything about India anyway, so we're going to be checking out why Chandrayaan 3's moon landing is important to India. Again, I'm sorry for pronouncing it wrong, that's the best I could do. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's watch this together. Let's go! India became the world's first nation to reach the South Pole of the Moon on August 23rd. India is now on the moon. People are applauding. Mission control erupted in cheers as the Chandrayaan-3 landed in a part of the moon where no country has ever landed before. For India, it's a matter of national pride. Absolutely. It happened just three days after a similar mission from Russia failed. It's a blow to the Kremlin because they are trying to show through this mission that Russia is again a superpower. The lunar south pole is significant because the expected presence of ice could support future human settlements. Here's why Moscow and New Delhi were in a race to get there and how they Future human settlements? Um, has anybody asked humans whether they want to live on the moon? Yeah, what makes you think we all want to live there? I don't want to live on the moon, it's supposed to be cold and I certainly don't want to find some like random American flag in my back garden. Exactly. No, but I mean, like... So many countries are trying to find the different planets for us to live on. Can we not sort this one out instead so we don't have to leave? Yeah, let's fix Air Force yeah. and then we'll look at other places. Yeah, we're not saying that it's a bad thing that India are going and exploring and seeing different options. But you know, we're all here. Maybe put the money into this as well. Yeah, help our future generations. Look yeah. after the people now. A little bit. Sorry to offend anyone. Yeah. And just in case people are like, oh, you're only saying that because it's Indian. We're absolutely not. We said the same thing about Russia as well. Yeah. And America. We are still very prideful of India reaching the moon though. And the fourth one to reach the South Pole. So don't think we're not. We're just talking about in general. We're about our planet, all of our planet collectively. 100%. Like, we don't know what they're going to find on the moon. Yeah. No one's ever been to that part before, so. God yeah. only knows. They could find everything we need. Or they could find nothing. Exactly. So regardless, it's not a wasted trip. But can we stay here? That's the real question. <laughs> Let's get back into this. The missions were not just about science, but also about politics. Of course. India's Chandrayaan-3, which means moon vehicle in Sanskrit, blasted off from Earth on July 14th. Lift off normal. Since then, the spacecraft made several maneuvers around the Earth and has been orbiting the moon to prepare for a landing. Mm -hmm. Russia launched its Luna 25 less than a month later. It took a much faster and more direct route to the moon and was projected to reach the surface first on August 21st. The South Pole is strategic because the expected presence of ice could provide fuel, oxygen and drinking water, making it a potential site for mining and human settlements. But experts say a smooth landing is extremely challenging. That's because the area has much tougher terrain compared to other parts of the moon. It is bumpy, littered with craters and has limited sunlight. The lander module has begun its descent. India tried but failed to reach there four years ago and finally succeeded on August 23rd. This success belongs to all of humanity and it will help moon missions by other countries in the future. That makes India the fourth country in the world to reach the moon after the United States, Russia and China. India is expected to get a lot of offers from other space agencies, foreign countries to launch like commercial satellites for them, which is going to be also a revenue earner for India. Mm -hmm. A happy landing for Russia's unmanned Luna 17 spacecraft. Russia was the first country to send a rover to the moon back in 1970, towards the end of a space race between the US and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. 
But Russia hasn't launched another lunar lander since the 1970s, and the stakes this time around were. Is the footage that we're watching there? That's not actual real footage. Is it? That's what I'm wondering. Is that just test footage or an animation just to show us what's going on, or is that real, real footage? Because it certainly doesn't look like real footage. It looks like it's kind of just, you know, this is what it will look like on the moon. Yeah. Somebody could let us know because if they do say it is real footage, it looks just ridiculous. And that's my opinion. Just an opinion though. Yeah. Don't, don't eat us alive. Like, I don't think it's real, but can people just let us know if that footage is real or if it is from like a movie or something like that. Or like a depiction of what did happen when they went to the moon. Yeah. Please let us know. And we're going to jump back into this. Especially high, more than 18 months after it launched the invasion of Ukraine. Connectors. Western sanctions imposed on Russia since the war complicated its collaborations in space with Europe and the US. Because of Western sanctions, a lot of the cooperation that used to take part um, in terms of space projects, they have come to an end. And also because of technology export bans, Russia cannot receive a lot of the electronics and other technology that it would have in the past from European nations that supported its space program. So this is extremely significant. For India, there are political and financial reasons driving its mission to the lunar South Pole. The successful mission could boost Prime Minister Narendra Modi's election campaign early next year. These kind of missions adds Ooh, to the national convenient. pride. Prime Minister Modi is going to tell his voters how the country has reached the moon, and which would make to his benefit. The Indian Space Agency works on a shoestring budget. In February, the government slashed funding for the Department of Space by 8% to $1.5 billion. In comparison, NASA's budget for 2023 is more than $25 billion. That's a big that is a major India difference. is hoping to get a lot of foreign collaborations in terms of like offers for joint venture missions to launch commercial satellites. So it relies on these foreign collaborations to support its space missions. <laughs> India's successful landing on the lunar South Pole could change its standing in the global space race, especially in Asia. India's position as a global space power would definitely be reinforced. Definitely puts India ahead of countries like Japan and Korea and just behind China. Oh, Japan. Meanwhile, Russia still has a way to go to catch up with the US and China. It's not the be-all and end-all for Definitely. Russia. There are other lunars, Luna 26 and Luna 27. They both depend on electronics from the West. And for as long as sanctions continue, it's going to be difficult for Russia to obtain the kind of technology that it needs to continue collaborating and to ensuring that it is number one, as it wants to be, in the space race. <laughs> First off, a very big shout out to the original content creators. Do make sure you check them out, give them a like, subscribe, and share and all that good YouTube stuff. And a very big shout out to India and everyone at the space station. A very, very proud moment for humanity. So shout out to India on that. And I'd say anyone from India watching, it's filling them with a lot of pride at this moment and time. What did you think of that, Daniel? Yeah, I mean, it's amazing that they're going up there and just seeing what they can find, really, I suppose. Yeah. Go on and just explore on a different. Well, it's not a plan of going and exploring the moon is insane because especially the last time i know there's no humans on it but the last time there was humans on the moon and they said you know no one can get there anymore because they lost technology so obviously this is a huge step now and india are trying to get astronauts to go up there as well now which that would be huge to go back there again and you know do it properly i suppose not just do it as a race to say that our country is better than yours to actually go up and scientifically see what's going on yeah we don't know, maybe there's people living inside the moon. We haven't found that out yet. Is India going to find it out? I'd say they will. <laughs> but as Modi said, it is a proud moment for humanity. So India weren't just thinking about themselves here. They thought about everyone on this mission, which is also a great thing to see for the world. But of course, we'd love to know your guys' thoughts and let us know, were you watching this live when this mm. was happening? Did you get to see the launch live? Let us know what it was like in person. If we are fortunate enough to have anyone here that was close by and got to see it in person. Can you share your thoughts with us in the comments down below? Absolutely, that's now because we were keeping an eye on this as well because you now we only done a short video on it when it took off a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago, whenever it was, sorry, I can't remember. Um, and we've been keeping an eye on it and it's amazing to see that it happened. Cool. 
I do have one thing to say that's a bit controversial again. Conspiracy theorists are going to have an absolute fail day with the animated um, lunar craft landing on the moon, aren't they? Yep, 100%. So, obviously because we're on the dark side of the moon, there's no sun. I've been looking this up, by the way, just in case. I'm not a scientist, I'm not an astronaut, I don't know. I've just got my information off of YouTube and Twitter, so if I'm wrong, drop it down below. So apparently they couldn't use cameras, like actual proper cameras, because it's so dark, which is fair enough, so they had to use a telemetry camera type of thing. It shows you the outline of it and they just made it bright so we could all see it landing on them. So obviously some people are gonna think that's not true and some people are gonna think that's amazing. So what do you think of the actual image that we got of the spacecraft landing on it? It's been our two since and we will chop ourselves out of this. <gasps> Space! <laughs>